Hey fam, in this video, I wanna share with you how to vlog your ministry and how to make much of Jesus. It is incredible the last two years what has happened in my life by using this camera to communicate not only to people around my city about Jesus Christ, but literally people all around the world. All I have to say each and every week, it's all we do if you haven't figured this out yet, Jesus is better. That's what we do every week. In just 2016, I literally never watched YouTube videos. I thought it was for people who wanted to waste time and watch silly cat videos. And until about October of 2016, I had a friend share with me a channel, uh, Casey Neistat. And I started watching some of his vlogs and I literally got hooked and I have seen every single one of his episodes ever since. Now what's really cool, October of 2016, I started watching Casey Neistat and it was so fun. Literally one year later in October of 2017, I got invited to hang out with Casey Neistat and like 50 other of his favorite creators. If you watch YouTube videos, you know like everyone behind me. It's pretty exciting. Fish will start pretty soon in New York City for a Samsung event. I might get to that later. If not, I am a YouTuber, so link right here where you can watch the rest of those videos about me and Casey. And so at the end of October, I decided to go buy a camera and try this thing myself. It's funny, the first trip that I ever did, it was a hunting trip with my grandpa and my dad, and just selfishly, I thought this would be a great way to remember uh, this kind of epic hunting trip together, but it actually really took off. But it made me realize that it's something that I have have not only a gift to kind of do, but it's something that I'm passionate about. And I really started to think what could happen if I do this on a more consistent basis. And in March, I started a daily vlog called it Documentary, which come on, you get it? I wanted to document my life. It's like a documentary, but my name's Trey, Document Trey. I was pumped. And ever since then in March, I've officially, of 2017, I've been doing vlogs at least three times a week. Now, before we really dive into what I think are really, really good tips for you on how to vlog, and again, I wanna make sure you know for me, vlogging is a lot less about this, just setting up a camera and talking, but it's literally bringing people in on your journey, taking people uh, through a day. Here's some examples of some footage I've done. If I'm a failure, it's gotta maybe show through these videos how I became a failure. God does something amazing, be able to show in these videos and it'll help teach them. So this is very much about, very much about my great grandchildren. Yeah. I'm horrible at vlogging already. I'm scared to talk to a camera in front of a bunch of people. Say, I'm balling. I bought it. <laughs> I bought it. It's funny. 100 subscribers. Thank you very much. I feel like I'm in this position in my life where I'm fighting for something that most people cannot yet see. We're expecting baby number two. love the thought that just because you declared something, fantastic, but now you need to defend that. And we're in the awkward aisle. Let's get out of here as soon as possible. <laughs> I'm not sure how much just got recorded of that, but that was a disaster. Now, a lot of people ask me, what are some tips, some tactics, uh, things to know before jumping into vlogging, and that's what I wanna really focus on today. I always start out with foundationally the three A's. Can you tell I'm a preacher? Uh, the first day I talk about is the audience. You need to determine what is your audience. For me, I have a twofold audience. The first audience, first and foremost, is my city. The city of Queen Creek where I have planted a church that I launched in January of 2016. The whole purpose for me of starting this vlog, especially because I'm a younger pastor, a uh, younger lead pastor for sure, I thought what a great way to build trust to my audience as fast as possible. I know trust takes time, but why can't I speed that up if I can show them my life. And so a deep, deep desire is for people who are in my congregation, believers, to be edified and strengthened through the videos I make, but also very much so, I tailor my content to reach more than that, especially those in my city who are not believers in Jesus, but have some sort of connection with me and getting to know me before they step foot on Sunday morning. The second part of the audience that I'm really passionate about, so not just my city, but is the world. And what's incredible about you 
YouTube is insane how you can reach people well beyond your context. Literally this morning, I had a pastor from South Africa send me a message and thank me that his con that my content is helping them. Also this morning, I had a girl from South Carolina that is taking my leadership workshop materials and using it as a curriculum for her small group and she just wanted to make sure I'm okay with that. Absolutely incredible. So for me, the world is a definite big part of my audience, specifically in encouraging believers, but also trying to bring in those who do not yet believe in Jesus. So you need to figure out what is my audience. It's important for you to determine an audience because it really helps you determine what kind of content you make. The next A I talk about is attention. You need to figure out how to grab people's attention. This means so many different things, but for me, it literally means a funnel. For me, there are different ways for me to get people's attention. Non-believers are not searching for Christian videos on YouTube. That is why I have created in my strategy, and I think it'll be a good practice for you as well, is to create a funnel. So my funnel, first and foremost, the widest way I pick up people is by my Disneyland videos. I take my family, we are obsessed with Disneyland, and so we go semi-frequently. We still have annual passes even though I live in Arizona. Don't judge me, and my largest uh, video at this point it's around 80,000 views of my pro tip video of Disneyland. So at least 80,000 people have seen me and it wasn't because they searched about Jesus, they searched about Mickey and they found me. And that is a way I can pull them in and get to know them and just make a relationship. Kind of the next layer is I just do family vlogs. I, I We do different things for Christmas and I just journey about that. We go to San Diego for a vacation and I vlog about that. And so that is another way to grab people's attention. And again, it's not a sermon clip, it's just me living my life and it's a great way to reach more people and to cast a wider net. Then it gets a little bit more serious where I do a lot of behind the scenes of my ministry. I'm planting a church and I uh, this is a journey for me. Uh, there's been several vlogs where I'm just saying, hey, this is our first time our church is doing this. Or I show a sermon clip and I talk about, man, I really bombed the sermon on that. I just open up about my life and I really show the struggle. I really show some success stories. I show baptism videos on my vlog. So I think it's important. It's not just a baptism video. There is a before, there is the middle of that, but then there's also an after kind of encapsulating the whole day. The next part of it is Q and trays. Now for me, again, Q and A videos are very important for the YouTube world. I encourage people to jump in on that as soon as possible. And this is a way I can bring a lot of people value. And a lot of times people ask Christian type questions and I answer that. Also people just ask questions about career and about passion. And I answer those as well. And so I call my segments Q and trays. Hope that inspires you, but that is one way for me to kind of get deeper and really talk about important topics. The next level I have, I'm almost done, is entrepreneur. So entrepreneur is what I call it. It's my leadership talks. And so literally this is 30 minute worth of content per video that I put on my vlogs. I'm also venturing into doing some shorter versions of that, but it's straight up leadership content. Uh, this is not for any, you know, I don't think those who kind of like my content aren't, they're not probably not watching these videos. However, I think this is also a way to grow deeper with my audience. What are ways you can grow deeper with your audience? Don't think that every single video has to be super short and really great thumbnail and getting people in. I think it's a great way to go wide, but I think there's also a good strategy of going deep. And what I've realized is I'm willing to take less views on those videos because I'm really honestly bringing them more value. And my last element of my funnel is my podcast. I push people over my podcast and my podcast is my full length messages. I also put up all my Q and trays on there. It definitely, it's called the Ministre podcast for me. It's straight up Christian content. That's where I know they're searching for me and I wanna bring them so much value. So oftentimes I really go deep in my podcast more than I go deep on my YouTube channel. Does that make sense? Now, the last A that I don't think enough people are talking about is 
access. This is why I like vlogging, and this is why I hope I'm bringing you value by talking about the actual art. What I think of a vlog, I think of Casey Neistat, of where literally you're seeing me leave my house, you're seeing me go into the grocery store, you see me, and it's not boring, don't get me wrong, well I guess sometimes it is, but it's literally life. It's not just, again, what I'm doing right here. To me, I think what's valuable is when your viewers feel like they're VIPs, where they feel like they know you. Now on Sunday mornings, if you know, if you're in a pastor context, you, you can connect with them and you can share stories about your life and people feel like they know you, but you really do create a, a, a bond that goes well beyond that if you go from the stage, but you bring them behind the stage. You show them the behind the scenes. You make people feel like they have access that other people do not have of you. And that is what is so powerful about this vlogging platform is it really does feel like you are best friends with every single person that's watching. And it is so funny because I talk to people and they bring up stuff about my life as if we were best friends. And I realize, oh, you know about that because I vlogged about it. It really is incredible how I actually make friendships so much faster by them first watching my vlogs. Now, that's the foundation, but I'm gonna give you guys some tips on really how to vlog. The number one tip when you actually start making videos is to always remember that storytelling is key. If you do not actually have a story, then don't upload. A lot of people really dramatize this and think that there needs to be a hero, there needs to be a villain, all that. That's kind of getting too far into it. Essentially, at the bare minimum, what every single video needs is a beginning, a middle, and an end. Like a, a setup to the story, a conflict in the story, and some sort of resolution. I made a whole video about this, but point number two is we need less experts and more experiments. A lot of people expect to go to YouTube and just talk about how brilliant they are and all it is is you're teaching people. Great, but what really moves people i found, especially on the platform, especially in vlogging, is you're experimenting. You're trying things. You're letting people in on the journey, but you're not quite sure if it'll work out. Less experts, more experiments. And that really does relieve a whole lot of the pressure that we put on ourselves and trying to figure out, is this video good enough? Don't worry about it, just upload, as long as you're not being a heretic. Tip number three is to build your brand. Really start building your brand, because you're not gonna have it all figured out, especially when you first start, but figure out what is it about me that makes me uniquely me. And this goes down to the fonts that you use, the color filter that you have. For me, uh, I have like my documentaries, my vlogs have a certain filter over them. But like my entrepreneur, my leadership talks have a black and white filter. Great leaders lead themselves through the ups and downs of life. That's a part of my brand. Using my name on everything is a part of my brand. Everything is a brand, so start figuring out what do I want everything to look like? Because that's key, because people, they need to see you like instantly recognizable. Oh, I know what this is. This is this guy's content. I just, it's super helpful. Like even Casey Neistat, his brand is his sunglasses. Like people like brands. Right. Tip four is music is of first importance. Do it first and also recognize how much of a priority it is. So I film the whole day first, but then when I go into editing, do not, do not make the whole story and then find the music. Go, I use these two websites, epidemicsound.com and or soundstripe.com. It's a monthly subscription. I go, I already kind of know kind of, you know, the genre, the beat, kind of the tone of the vlog. I find the right music. More often than not, my music is what makes or breaks my vlogs. Usually what I had in my head was a decent vlog. The music actually makes it into an incredible vlog. Edit according to the beat, use the music. It actually helps with pacing sometimes, helps you slow things down, helps you speed things up. Music is so stinking critical. Like, oh man, I wish people understood that, you know? All right, what else do we have? <laughs> okay, this was a bad idea. Tip number five is I think a big reason why a lot of people don't vlog. And remember this, cinematography is always the cherry on top. Don't think it's the whole thing. If you look at YouTube trending, it's so, as for me, it's so frustrating 
to see like there's videos that go viral and they're so they're, they look terrible and then there's beautiful videos that get barely any views remember it's all about the story now cinematography is super fun cinematography like for me is a great way to add value and it and it really does bring excitement to the viewer but it's not the whole reason it's not the main reason why they're there so use whatever you have your iPhone's good enough get creative with what you have like for me transitions are big it's not even so much of a cinematography thing as it's just a technique thing. In fact, I'm gonna transition to the next point. Tip six is to know that the community is in the comments. If you're not willing to take the time and reply to people, encourage people's comments, really bring value in the comment section, then you should not do YouTube. And my last tip is to know the significance of documenting versus creating. Gary V uh, says this a lot on YouTube and that really encouraged me a ton. For me, my job in this YouTube world is not just to make a bunch of new content just for YouTube. What I do as a pastor, I'm creating content every day. And, and so it's really a lot of pressure on me to think, oh man, I gotta also create more content for YouTube. What I love to do is to repurpose content. Sometimes, oh man, I'm the worst. Everybody knows not to put gum in a video. I'm sorry guys, moving on. Everybody knows, uh, no, where am I going? That threw me off. That's what's fun, on YouTube you can just do that. Pastors, we're making stuff all the time, so for me, I include sermon clips in my vlogs, that helps a lot with content. The enemy is the mastermind at despising what God has designed. Everyone who despises their role spends a lot of their energy disguised as whole. Here's the main point, if you walk away today, I want you to remember this one. Possibly tweet it, but I want you to remember this. You rob your soul when you despise your role. A lot of times I take a point or even a sub point from my message and then just kind of draw it out more into a vlog. So it's not like I'm studying more than I already was for my passage. Uh, like I'm just taking what I've been learning and figuring out a new way to repurpose it and give it to a different audience in a more engaging way. Another thing to know is a lot of times I pick up my camera I have no idea what's gonna come that day. I have no idea of my interactions I'm going to have. And that's what makes it so fun. I capture it and it's not planned, it's genuine and authentic. And the viewers really feel that. They really feel like, oh man, like we don't know what's gonna happen next. And it really is a great way to keep connected with your audience. People, they just wanna see your life. They wanna see how you're living it. And especially as Jesus followers, we have such an opportunity uh, my life saying, and it's the reason why I do my YouTube, I wake up every day to inspire and inform others that Jesus is better. Jesus is better, the branding by the way. That is what we do, and, and that's our job, and it's such a joy, and so literally, I'm living my life the way I live it. I'm bringing a camera along the way. The editing is what's different, because uh, that takes an hour or two. Um, I just wish, I have so many more tips, but I really don't want to overwhelm you. Some things I would bring up is my gear. That's on all my YouTube videos. You can look in the description on all of those. You can click those links. Another thing is editing software. I use Adobe Premiere Pro. You can just find it online, uh, tutorials for that. Literally any video editing software will do. I can go on and on, but the point is your community needs you to share your story because it's about King Jesus. Really the world needs it. So don't be afraid, start uploading. I would love for you to go to my channel, comment on one of my videos, let me know that this inspired you. I wanna see your channel, I wanna support you. Uh, what a great opportunity we have. I think this is the, like Brady Shear always says, right? This is the greatest communication shift since the printing press in the Reformation period. And I really do believe we're gonna look back in this era and be so thankful that we are pioneers in getting this video stuff off, up off the ground showing people our lives and using it to glorify King Jesus. So thank you guys. I really hope that this brought you a lot of value. I hope that you connect with me in the various ways, especially on YouTube and Instagram. Ah, I get so excited to think about you guys taking the plunge and seeing so many people's life changed. All right, see ya.